Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Um, Jake said today we're gonna talk about storytelling and product design and specifically talking about uh, team alignment uh, via narrative. So this is something that at, at Headway, we, we are uh, exercising with our clients and our projects, things of that nature, and we're gonna walk you through how we do so. Um, so um, again, my name is Clint McManaman. Uh, I'm a design lead here at Headway. Um, I am 15 years this year uh, in, in the world of design. Professionally, uh, before that, um, I did documentaries and short films, uh, kind of traveled the world a little bit and um, told stories through the eye of, of a camera lens. And so um, outside of design, uh, I really enjoy road trips. The weirder, the better, the weirder they are uh, to explore weird places. Um, and if there's a soccer match uh, in Kansas City along the way, then that's even better. So those are some of the things I enjoy outside of that. So um uh, again, um, you know, at Headway, you know, we launch and grow new digital products with less risk, just to let you know a little bit about who we are. Uh, we do this through business and product strategy, design, and software development. Um, we serve startups that are looking for, you know, to launch new products, uh, corporations that want to innovate. Um, and today, uh, it just kind of a quick rundown of, of what we're going to talk about. We're going to we're going to talk about story. We're going to talk about what makes a good story. We're going to talk about how story can bring alignment to your team, to your product, to your ideas. Um, we're going to talk about how to build that story, how to tell that story, how to how to iterate with that story in mind, and then we'll have some uh, some time at the end for some Q and A. Uh, again, if you're on social, you know, obviously follow us here um, on YouTube. Subscribe. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, and Dribble at Headway IO is the handle for that. All right, so what makes a good story? Um, you know, every story has a solid framework that outlines the situation and brings the audience into the mind of, of its characters. Um, in our case, you know, with product design, we're talking about the user. The characters is the user. Uh, and so some of the things that, some of the steps along the way, things that we want to, um, to be uh, working through in developing that, that framework is developing empathy. Um, and who is the user that you're describing? What is their day like? What, what does life look like through their eyes? Um, we want to establish context. So what is the problem the user is trying to solve? Uh, we want to describe the conflict. So what is getting in the way of the user solving their problem? Uh, and then initially, or eventually, we want to resolve that conflict. So we want to figure it out. So how can we solve that user's problem? Um, so Anne Marie Clifton has this really good quote. It says, data may help you find the best path. But storytelling is how you get other humans to walk that path with you. So how can we use story to bring alignment? Um, how things work at Headway, you know, clients come to us, they have an idea or they have a problem, they want to level up, or they have this brand new idea that they just want to create. And so generally what we do is we, we listen to that idea, we take in all that we can to learn about that client, that idea, their, their hopes, their dreams, uh, their constraints, the things that they have um, kind of brought to the table. And we're gonna go and we're gonna test out that idea. So, um, you know, that idea is not gonna be fully fleshed out. It might be really close or it might just be a sliver of an idea, just some uh, kind of basic things, like maybe even a napkin sketch kind of thing. So regardless of what it is, we're going to go and we're going to test that thing out and we're going to test it with real folks outside of our circle. And so um, as that happens, you know, holes are going to get punched into that idea. New things are going to emerge, new opportunities, uh, new ideas, just in general, things are going to start to come out of that process of us talking with folks about this idea and asking them, you know, what, how does this idea uh, make you feel what resonates what are some things ideas that you have what are some things that how could it help you solve your problem things of that nature and so um but how do we you know how do we bring how do we use all that to kind of bring alignment how do we get the team and then all of our stakeholders on the same page uh, going the same direction um, with that you know this is really tricky in the early phases when your goals are undefined and kind of evolving but it's crucial to try and find what those nuggets of the story are and start to place them together and, and, and craft whatever that story is. Um, that tool, the, the telling of that story is, 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 is super effective. And um, 
And it's one of the main things that we try to do with every project because it becomes kind of the, the constant. It's like our guiding, our guiding stars, our North Star, helping us to stay on track as we start to kind of uncover, start to kind of build forward everything that uh, the idea may be. And so Neil Stevenson, IDEO has this quote, a storytelling elevates the project deliverable into something that everyone can relate to on a human level. And stories can help activate a sense of purpose by connecting you to the purpose that you're creating the product for. So not only are we figuring out what is the most important features, the things that nature, but we're figuring out how to really connect with the audience, with the user and um, create a product that is useful. Um, so we recently just went through this process uh, with Ditto and, and I'll use Ditto as the example today as we kind of go through the rest of the uh, rest of the slides. But Ditto is a project we just launched. You can actually watch uh, a video of Ryan Hatch uh, marketing or um, our product uh, product lead at Headway. We kind of go through all from like from these very like basic idea to launch of Ditto. And you kind of you can see the process kind of going through all of that. Um, and how we got there. But, um, you know, with Ditto, you know, building the story, um, Ditto was, you know, again, we, 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 we had this founder who came to us with this idea. And um, you, you, in that, we wanted to kind of set the goal. Like, what, you know, what is, what is Ditto? What, what does Ditto need to do? What are the goals? Um, you know, how, and with, within that, it was one of the big questions was, how might we help couples better their relationship? You know, we already had this kind of rough idea from the founder, but that became like our North Star, kind of our, our goal to kind of kind of move forward. And so from there, we had to assemble the cast. You know, um, we recruited um, our cast uh, through Respondent. Um, we uh, did enter. This is kind of a sampling of some of the folks that we talked to, people that were in relationships, people that were um, had been had a history of relationships or were new to relationships, uh, people from all different walks of life and started to craft um, a lot of the things that they were saying, started to craft the story of what Ditto could be. Um, you know, we asked them, you know, we asked, uh, you know, what problems are, are, you, are you struggling with? Um, what behaviors have you done in your life or are doing that have improved your relationship? And so all of those interviews helped us to start crafting the next step of, of the story process, which is, which is writing the script. You know, we're taking all of that information that we're getting, we're synthesizing it in our interviews and we're starting to craft that script. So the script is made up of all those interviews, like I mentioned, um, it, we, we would take, you can see here, this is kind of a sampling of, of, those, um, of those interviews. And we would take that and we would synthesize that, um, synthesize those, we would find the patterns, things that were common throughout all of those different stories, people's experiences. And we started to craft those into the story that is ditto. Uh, and that we started to kind of look at what works, you know, what's the desired state, things of that nature. We synthesized all of that down to kind of start basically creating this script based on our cast, cast of characters, their relationships, their struggles, their desires, what they are, how they were coping, where they were failing, et cetera. And what we discovered through those stories is um, couples, um, the needs of the couples and the needs inform the features that we essentially build out and set. So Here's an example of a persona. You know, Bethany was one of our one of our interviews, and uh, Bethany was one of the folks that helped us kind of keep track of like where we were headed with every feature that we were uh, thinking about building, uh, and and helped shape essentially what Ditto became. So, um, again, feedback is part. This is an iterative process, so you know, feedback shapes the story. So. We went out and we grabbed all that information from folks. We had all these interviews, we had all of this information and we used that to kind of start crafting our ideas going forward. And so we would revisit all of these folks with those prototypes um, and early designs and test bills, things of that nature um, and, and, and seeing what resonated with them. Were we tracking with those things? Were we tracking with their needs? Like, were we developing something that they could see themselves using. And so um, again, Bethany and the others were along the way, uh, you know, kind of guiding us and, and we were helping to kind of uh, um, helping us to, to build the app going forward. So, um, so on the alignment bit, you know, 
story helps provide alignment as you start to craft. So your development team, your design team, your product management, maybe you have marketing included, your client. Um, you start to bring everyone together around this idea of these are the people that we're talking to. These are their stories. These are their needs. And these are the things that we want to accomplish. These are the things that we want to, we want to meet these people where they are today. So as you progress, your real user feedback will help you know if what you're dreaming up is uh, a documentary or if it's a work of fiction. Um, all the guides, you know, every week we would do a share out with the client. This is an example of us kind of going through some of that stuff. Um, these things, these stories continue to guide us as we went through. It helped us to prioritize um, the MVP for the project. It helped us to identify uh, areas that needed more investigation. Um, it helped us to keep on track with the project as we were going forward and planning everything out. And so once the story finds alignment, it provides then kind of the map to the actual product design and then all of the next steps for development as you kind of go forward. Um, so, hey Clint, yeah. There's a quick, uh, as you're talking about some of that stuff, there's actually yeah. a question that came through from Linda. I'll just share it on the screen here. Uh, any tips you have on synthesizing data in Miro? Because you kind of were talk, bringing up all those Miro screens and stuff. Do yeah. you have any thoughts on your experience uh, working with Ryan and, and just and going through that Miro process? Yeah, we have, um, and I think I think Ryan may actually have um, talked about this in one of his talks. I'm not 100% sure on YouTube, but there is in the Ditto talk where we talked a little bit about the process of of Ditto from 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 idea to launch of going through this process and some of the boards that Ryan had created where we started to we kind of started with a basic um, kind of skeleton framework with our first couple of like interviews. But then as we were, as we were kind of conducting those interviews, that skeleton started to change a little bit. And that skeleton were like basically places within the board that um, were kind of areas of interest, areas of struggle, um, areas of like um, hopes and dreams and things of that nature. And so we, we took those um, interviews and we started to take those things and see like who, what, who, who, who should we target first, right? Who, what are some of the triggers that in those conversations um, started to make sense for like a feature or things that we could start to see were like, the same over here with this couple, they're saying essentially the same thing over here. Like one of the things that we found was that um, in, in our interviews was that women were finding, trying to find ways to connect with their significant, like their husband or just couples in general, were trying to connect with their significant other via like uh, texting or I'll send you an email or I'm going to leave a sticky note. Like there were, there were issues with communication just in general that people were trying to, rather than have face-to-face -face, like conversation, which a lot of times is very intimidating, or they didn't know how to say what they wanted to say, or they didn't want to say the wrong thing, they would try to find little exercises. One, a uh, couple of couples actually had a they they had like a, a board game, a card game, where they would play this card game to initiate conversation about the relationship, and so. We saw those all things as like commonalities where we started to bring those things together as potential features and things that we could build into Ditto that could help couples. And so when you start to see those key things kind of come uh, come out and emerge, you start to group them together. And that was one of the big things that Miro helped us to do. Um, there's a There are some templates in there and we could probably share out some of that stuff at some point. It's really good um, mm -hmm. that I think would help guide that that conversation. So Awesome. Thanks, Clint. Question. I'll let you jump yeah. jump back into it. Yeah. So as we're you know as we're going through that, all of that is steering every decision that we make. We've now moved away from opinions. We now we're moved away from what we think is best. We're now we're, we're we 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 started with that because it helped us to kind of get going. It kind of helped us to get out there to figure out are our assumptions on track? Or are we off track? And those stories started to inform then what people really want or need or are looking for uh, in an app that's based on relationships, uh, based on marriage. And so this is, you know, again, starting to kind of take us through those stories were guiding us. They were helping us to continue to steer the ship. And so, again, story steers the ship. You know, we have everybody on board now. 
And now as a team, you know, we're, we're flexing, we're walking, we're going through this together. We're, we're, we're firing on all cylinders, the client, the development team, the design team, product team, we're all like focused on these goals. And there are times where we do change course, you know, we would build a feature and we would test it and we would, you know, oh man, we need to change course because, you know, X, Y, and Z or whatever, or little features like in the day-to-day, -day, once we launched Ditto, it's informing me as a product designer on what features are important to focus on. What are some of those features that we probably need to like shelve and come back to later once the app evolves and kind of matures a little bit more in the future? Same thing goes for, you know, what bugs are most important to squash now from a development side? And what are some of those things that we can kind of wait on later? So it really is helping us to uh, decide what to build and what to kill is kind of how I, I look at it. What are some of the things that we can continue to kind of build upon? What are some things that we need to kind of push away that, you know, as the app develops, matures, evolves, um, and we start to learn, we get more folks into the app using it daily. How does it continue to do that? And so that does inform the story a little bit. It kind of shapes, but the story really as a whole is still this like it's it's still the stronghold it's still the 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 blueprint um that that does guide us and direct us as we kind of go through and so throughout all that we're placing the user at the center of all of our product decisions um, we're bringing alignment to build better products just in general we're keeping those folks um, front and center and and hopefully we're building something that they want to use so um that's the kind of the 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 uh, overall uh, presentation there. So I wanted to open it up for any other questions uh, that you may all have. Uh, we have a few minutes here, and uh, yeah. So thanks. Awesome, Clint. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, thanks everyone for being here. Yes. Yeah, so if you have any questions, just start putting them in the chat. And if you have like a say, you have like a big long-winded question. Um, we can actually send you a, a link uh, to this this stream here, and you can hop on the call with us and ask a, ask a question. Uh, we're happy to do that as well. So yeah, if anyone here is, that's watching has a question about any part of the process here today, throw it in the chat and we'll answer it as soon as we can. Um, yeah, Clint, I know you were talking about Miro before um, and, and, uh, and using Miro a lot. Did you... Um, I guess when you, I know Ryan came onto the team, but in your experience, um, I guess before uh, well, working at Headway and then working at Headway, like what have what have you seen? Uh, I guess as like huge steps in like improving the process, like starting using Miro versus other tools, or using a, pro a process in Miro versus other tools. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, before I would say uh, before using Miro or even like Whimsical, any kind of app that kind of like gets out of the way, it's not linear. Like, you know, we use Notion a lot. I've used Dropbox Paper, I love Dropbox Paper. Uh, but it is that linear kind of way of thinking where you're kind of writing things into a list. Um, I love the idea of being able to kind of break apart and um, like use the sticky method, right? So that's where Miro, I think, has brought us, um, brought, brought us forward on just when we pull up a conversation with someone, we're uh, both Ryan and I, or whoever, whoever is leading the product uh, management side of that, we will be inside of a mirror board and we're just kind of like riffing on sticky notes and we're kind of following each other around the board and kind of placing those things in there. Sometimes we're doubling up saying some of the same things, but that's okay. It's just really, um, it's kind of brought the friction off of capturing notes and collaboration is brought in. It's very similar to how we're working in Figma where you have multiplayer and you can see uh, the design team working on something, working through things. You can have the client jump in, add comments and kind of see things going uh, in real time. Um, it has provided this like very fluid um, process that, that just, it, it just, it's improved not only the capturing of those thoughts, um, but also the synthesis and like delivery of those thoughts over time. So then you start to really, I think personally, I just, I learned better in that, in that way as well. Um, and it's been just one of those game changers, I think for, for us as a, as an organization, I know it has for me personally. Oh, I'm on mute. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, anyway, 
I'm so I was asking uh, Miro Frig Jam and thoughts on how it could apply to this process, but also I'm curious, you know, because a lot of people might just like using just Miro and never use Figma at all. So I'm curious, do you think like the whole team might migrate into Fig Jam or do you feel like they kind of serve two different audiences or different needs? That's a good question. I personally, you know, haven't um, got to play with Fig Jam yet and I'm excited. I want to, I do want to jump in there and, and, and use it. I think that um, it looks to me to be very similar to what we do in Miro. Um, and I think if your team is on Figma already, it just makes sense to use that tool as much as you possibly can. Um, Figma has really figured out how to do um, the whole uh, live player, you know, like multiplayer mode. And I think it just it just works. And I, that's just one of those things that um, it also just works in Miro as well. It just kind of depends, I think, where your team is. Um, and it, but I personally just excited to kind of take it for, for a spin. It's it's one of those features that I was most excited about from last week's um, conference. And um Excited to see see how it how it uh, informs our team and helps us level up. Yeah, for sure. I, I I messed with it the other day. So what I did is I I needed to provide some feedback for for Sam on something on our website. So I did a full page screenshot. I just like dropped it into Fig Jam, and then I just started drawing like, oh, can we move this here? Can we adjust this here? Um, stuff like that. And then I had stickies on certain sections too. It was actually, I actually enjoyed it, but I, the only thing is then like, cause I, I started it as a draft and then I went to save it into a, a, a project within Figma. Um, and then I was like, where'd it go? And then it was like, just being kind of weird. Um, so I think it just takes a little bit of uh, getting used to. Um, so yeah. that's, I'm wondering too, it's like, is it worth like, if you're already super comfortable in Miro switching over it, if like the, it is really nothing added like value cause they both do the same thing. It's just like one place versus like, places but uh for doing things but yeah. yeah i don't know it'll be interesting yeah it's like uh i i guess i think about um you know even cross linking things right being mm -hmm. able because right now the way we use miro is we will have synthesizing all the different these ideas and things and then if i come up with a feature sometimes i'll drop a sticky with a link um, to that particular prototype in Figma or that board. Oh yeah, yeah. Connect, you know, that idea or those that that section of ideas to mm -hmm. a tool. Um, and so that's one of those things where I wonder if Fig Jam opens that up to where you it's just it's just seamless. It's just part of the project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Loom. The way that we use Loom is, you know walking or talking through an, an idea on video, trying to async with your team, uh, all mm -hmm. of us remote, that kind of thing. Um, and using Loom as a, we've, we've made our own little cards inside of Figma, for example, that have like an editable link and all that. And we drop those in with our prototypes um, to, to, to uh, open a new tab and, and look at Loom, for example. And then with Loom, we point people back to a prototype with the little annotation button that they have now. So we're trying to interlink as many of those things as we can. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, it's just, everything just keeps getting better as far as the software getting out of the way so that you can really focus on the ideas, which is awesome. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. I think it would be great. I know, I know that you and Ryan, uh, the link that I shared earlier, it's on our channel. Um, it's the, uh, the feedback loops and, and, um, yeah, prototyping. Uh, I think it's called, um, the title of the video is from startup from startup idea to venture launch Figma prototypes and customer feedback loops. Um, right. So if you haven't checked that out yet, folks, check out on our channel. Um, it's got a huge breakdown of like one specific project and all the things that we did that kind of Clint referred to today. Um, but I wonder if it'd be really cool to go go into like I like uh, Linda was asking, just like how we go through the synthesis process when we get information and in from customer interviews, like how do we go in Miro? Like, what is that process like sharing the, like you mentioned, like it'd be cool to share some templates and synthesis and stuff. Yeah. I think, um, I think people would really like that. Um, I don't know if anyone watching agrees, if you agree, you know, say something in the chat, but, um, yeah, thanks for sharing that Clint. But I think, um, I think those are like the weird things that like people always wonder, like, well, I wonder what they're asking or how they think about choosing a over B or like when it's, you know, like at what point do you have enough evidence to make a decision, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, yeah, I would so. add too that we're, you know, in that process, we are bringing a client along for the ride through all of that. So they're seeing, um, they're seeing what people are saying. They're seeing how the story is being shaped. They're being able to, you know, understand that like their, their idea has like this whole other like side or sides to it that they didn't themselves uh, probably realize, right? And so it's informing their decisions as a business and or whatever, and helping them to to see the a broader picture than than they had previously. And so um, that's one of my favorite things that we do is is we bring the client into that process as well as the design process from the beginning. And so they're seeing like they're kind of stepping in and getting to be uh, a team member. Um, and see the process unfold and understand along the way. So it cuts out a lot of those like questions or assumptions, um, things of that nature that help us just to continue to like really try and find that authentic story around a product and what what people um, would resonate with. And and um, and I it's it's a unique situation. I think if you weren't in an agency, you could still do that same thing with your stakeholders at your company wherever it may be that you are, bringing them along for the ride, uh, them, that transparency uh, really does create um, for a much better environment, just creative, creatively and I think just overall for the product and the user. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm not seeing any other questions come in and I asked you all the questions that I have. So I think we can wrap some things up today. Um, I just want to thank everyone for being here. As a reminder, this this was recorded on YouTube here. Um, we'll have it up on our channel, all that kind of stuff. And we'll, we'll uh, also on our website, if you go to headway.io slash events, um, we have um, we actually do have an event coming up next next month. So I'm actually going to share my screen quick. We actually, so if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, you'll see all the updates for the, the upcoming events as well. But we're uh, next month will be, um, We'll be chatting with Katie um, from the senior designer at Headway about guiding design with product strategy. I'm going to share my screen quick. There we go. So May 25th at 10 a.m., we'll be talking about guiding design with product strategy. So learning effective ways to use product strategy elements throughout the design process. So Katie will be walking through um, things that you can use um, to make that happen uh, on your project. So be sure to register either on our website or um, you can just um, you can just uh, subscribe on YouTube and you'll get you can hit the notification thing and you'll get notified when when we go live for that as well. We have a couple other events that we're in planning for right now. Hopefully we'll have those out by Friday uh, on our website or on our YouTube channel. And we look forward to sharing uh, those with all of you. Um, again, thanks everyone for being here. We really appreciate it and uh, hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, Clint. Sure.